Yeah, well, to be honest with you, we made a, a huge step forward in testing in Spain, and, and from then we haven't touched it all year, really. We found a fantastic setting with the, the only suspension, um, found something that gave us a lot of grip that we were lacking last year, found some geometry settings with the help of Kawasaki, they were over at the test with us, um, and it was that was the drastic change. It was really a lot about geometry, um, wheelbase length, um, head angles, all that kind of stuff. And once we got that dialed in, we didn't really change the bike that much all year. You know, we've just had little clicks here and there, and it seems to work to every single circuit, um, bar a couple of you know times when we've, we've altered the, the spring rate or something like that. But the actual geometry of the bike has stayed the same. Um, we even tried lowering the bike at Silverstone and went straight back again. You know, we dropped the front end two mil and then straight away we went back because it didn't work. Go when they go off, then the crucial start. Good start by Buchan. Terrific start by Shaky Byrne. Buchan, Hopkins, Iden, Ellison in sixth, ahead of Laverty, Mossy, Smirts. Lee Jackson up to 10th place out of McConnell and Hickman. It's down at about 10 degrees, which is fairly cold track temperature. Most of the grid, in fact, everybody except Luke Stapleford, James Ellison and Michael Laverty uh, are on the zeros, a softer of the options, which shouldn't go as well uh, come the end of the race. when they, they work better when conditions are warmer, when track conditions are warmer. So, uh, but they're all on the same. The, the people we can see are all on the same, so they should be in the same boat. Because number 25, Josh Brooks, this is an emotional moment. Josh Brooks, he's been fighting for this title since 2009. Never been outside the top five, come close twice. And finally, he's won it. Josh Brooks wins the race. He becomes the MC Insurance British Superbike champion. To be honest here, not one of our best performances. On both sides of the garage, it was really the, uh, the, the uh, lack of performance was down to tyre choice. We felt after Silverstone that uh, um, running a harder tyre uh, would be the best option for us. We, have, we clearly had tyre wear problems towards the end of the race in cold conditions there. And we went for the uh, SC1, the harder option. And to be fair, during the race, it never really got going. So, so on behalf of, behalf of both um, James and Luke, we kind of handicapped them a bit made by making that choice. Uh, both riders were happy to use that tyre, but it was a bit 50-50, and on this occasion, we got it wrong. Shocking, <laughs> if I'm honest. We, um, we were one of, one of two or three riders that went with a hard tyre. All the guys in front of us went with a softer one. We figured here, with the temperature being similar to the Silverstone, we thought we weren't going to get away with the zero. And we knew the majority of the boys were using a zero, but I figured it would tail off halfway through the race and the one that we had in might come in halfway through. So I thought, if I'm in about fourth or fifth, even sixth place halfway through the race, when everyone else starts tailing off, I can start picking them off. Perfect start for all the men on the front. Oh, initial start was terrific for the BBM, BBM Kawasaki, and he does hold on to it on the inside. Byrne leads it downhill through Paddock Hill, and that's what precisely what he needed to do to get a little bit of an edge on Josh Brooks. Luke Stapleford's off, oh, the JGP Kawasaki. And he's had such an accident-free transition so far after his amazing season in British Super Sport. James Ellison is the uh, slightly unfamiliar figure on the back of this queue. You can see him there on the green and white JG Speedfit Kawasaki, uh, number 77 with the yellow helmet running just behind Lee Jackson. So that's the top ten flying through your picture now. There's a move by Ellison, finally creeping inside, if that's the right word, at Paddock, getting inside Lee Jackson and moving into ninth place. Oh, there's a red flag Oh, and a now. red flag. We've got a red flag out on the last lap. The red flag has gone out with uh, Josh Brooks in the lead, Shaky Byrne in second place. Yeah, the, the change hasn't been as as great as I thought. Obviously, coming to Brands Hatch with the, uh, the Friday being damp was, was tricky. Um, we lost a bit of time in the dry, so uh, it was being chucked in at the deep end again. But uh, that was, that was the, always the plan, really. We only had two rounds to, to get used to the bike, so um, it's all a learning curve. Um, like I say, it's not been too too tricky. Um, the speed, we're, we're not so bad on speed, but obviously the position with the class being so close this year, the, the position doesn't look great. So uh, it's all a case of going out and learning the bike a bit more each session and, and hopefully moving up.
This is the final outing in British Superbikes 2015. Shaky Bird again getting a good drag. And, uh, whoa, almost through the middle of them there. Is that Hopkins around the outside? Yeah, that's Hopkins. Well, inside, Hopkins then outside. crouched his way around the outside, and the Ducati Panigale leads it. who did the double at Brands Hats, at Brands Hats at the Indy circuit at the second round has obviously got a scent of things happening here at Brands Hatch here on the final day of the season. Oh, wow. Now, that was, uh, no, that was a terrific move by Ellison because Shaky is terrifically strong down there. But Shaky pulls back across the front of him and the two Kawasaki swap places and pain. This is going all the way to the wire, perhaps. There's Mark Halverson Smith. Mark Smith Halverson, sorry. And <laughs> his, uh, his GJG Speedfit team watching on as Ellison tries to wrest the lead back from the Tyco BMW. Well, time's running now. There's... There's not that many passing opportunities that are going to be clean, and like I say, likes it clean as Ellison, not a man for taking massive risks. As they drop down the hill now, Ellison moves to the right of the BMW. He's going to, He's going to go through, bravely through, at the bottom of the 170 mile an hour plus Pilgrims drop. The BMW cuts back to the inside for Westfield and retakes the advantage. The two cars are glued to his back wheel. Laverty once again takes it. Down Pilgrims drop, he has an advantage. Nothing that can be done there. James Ellison has looked a few times as they go into into, into the left hand at Sunday, but he's not close enough. Now it's all needs down. Needs to run, it needs to, to run. The final surge, Shaky Byrne will be looking at the two of them as they come underneath the bridge. He gets inside Ellison. Oh no, Ellison's holding it round the outside. Shaky cuts inside him. Tycho BMW are going to finally take their first race win of the whole year for Michael Laverty with Ellison second, Byrne third, Linfoot grabs fourth place. Philip Neal and the gang congratulate each other. It's been a long, hard run. Yeah, for sure we finished it in the right way. We started in the right way and we finished it in the right way and uh, that gives us um, confidence and uh, determination to come next year, back next year, all guns blazing. Come on, boys. Well, starting from testing, we, uh, we worked really well. Then we come into the first part of the season with a brilliant start. You couldn't ask for it any better. And then we did our little mid-season bit with James's um, crashes, come back again started afresh and then he's just podium podium had a little bit of a stall at silverstone and then finished off now with a podium nice little start for next year give a bit of confidence we've got new bikes again so back to the drawing board testing in november come back next year can't wait